He has never fought nobody Terrence's caliber of Terrence's boxing mind that he has. So, who that? If you don't know my name, you you a bum. You a real bum. You not a boxer. Aaron Spence. That's his name. I'm taking out everybody. You not here. You a bum. There we go. What's going on, fight fans? We're finally here. You know what time it is. You see the title. One of the biggest fights of this decade. This is a generational bout between Earl the True Spence and Terrence Bud Crawford. But before I get into it, make sure you like, subscribe, share the video, click the notification bell, more importantly, so you know when I'm dropping that new heat. And without further ado, let's go into it, man. Yo, be there or be square tonight, man. Pay-per-view, you already know what time it is. Start time is 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the main event is estimated to be starting around 11 p.m. with the fighters walking out. I'm going to give you guys my breakdown and go down the list, the checklist of who I think is going to win and why they're going to win. And then go ahead and give you my prediction and whatnot. So let's go ahead and, and talk about these two crazy, talented boxers, man. Earl True Spence, number two ranked welterweight in the world. He has three of the belts. He's 28 and 0, with 22 of those wins by way of knockout. 33 years old, he fights southpaw. He stands at 5, 9 and a half inches with a 72 inch reach. Now we look at Terrence Bud Crawford, number one ranked welterweight in the world. He has the fourth belt. He is 39 and 0, with 30 of those wins by way of stoppage. 35 years old, about two years on Spence. He fights from either stance, southpaw or orthodox. Very versatile fighter. Stands at 5'8 with a 74 inch reach. So, hey man, T Mobile Arena is going to be lit tonight. I'm going to tell you that much. Vegas is going to be on fire. It's already buzzing right now. And the fan duel money line is minus 146 in Bud's favor and plus 116 against Earl Spence. So, it's really a coin flip of the fight. And the odds speak towards that. Vegas kind of knows that this is a very, very tight, highly contested matchup. So, let's go ahead and look at the tail of the state tape and their resumes so the last six fights for each of these fellas right here um very interesting matchups that they both had so earl spence he's had a lot of good competition in his last six fights starting in 2018 he um was able to beat lamont peterson and then he beat carlos ocampo later in the year then mike garcia in march of 2019 by unanimous decision then he had a split decision win against Sean Porter in a very, very highly contested fight. And he had a knockdown in round 11, I believe, and he was able to get that victory. Very, very good fight for him to sharpen his metal and really put himself through the crucible, through the fire, through the war, and come out on the other side a champion. Then he had the fight against Danny Swift Garcia during lockdown in December, and he had won that by unanimous decision dominated that fight and then his last fight most recent fight against your denny's ugas he was able to ko him in april of last year after ugas had come off of a win against the great manny pacquiao okay so hella hella good lineup of, of guys that he was able to to beat down that stretch and then you go ahead and look at bud crawford on the flip side last six six fights um 2018, he beat Jose Benavidez Jr. by stoppage TKO. Then in 2019, he stopped Amir Khan. And then later in 2019, he stopped Kavalaskis. And then in 2020, in November, he stopped Kel Brook. And then in 2021, damn near a year later, right before Thanksgiving, he stopped Sean Porter, which is crazy. We've never seen that happen. Sean Porter's a dog. Nobody ever stops him. Crazy stoppage there. I believe in the 11th round. And then his his father threw in the towel. Um, highly, highly controversial stoppage, but nonetheless, he, he fought great. And then his latest fight, um, when him and Spence were supposed to fight in December of last year, it didn't happen, negotiations fell through, and he ended up fighting his mandatory, David Abanasian, who was able to KO him. I believe it was like right round five or six. So he, he's been very, very active. Now, let's, let's go ahead and, and look at the fireworks leading up to this fight. So the press conference they had, and, you, and I made a video on this. You heard them chirp, talking and chirping. Bud talking about he going to um, have a fish fry 
since you know Earl Spence also calls himself a big fish in the pond, he said we're gonna have a, a fish fry. We're gonna cut them up and gut them in filet. You know that's they're they're not really trying to be venomous towards each other, but like they 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 really amping up the trash talk. You know what I mean? And then Spence like yo bud, we're gonna we're gonna roll them up and smoke them like a dime bag. You know what I mean like easy work. So they, they they did a lot of chirping, but even more so trainers have been chirping crazy man especially that was the original press conference um tour and then this recent press conference during fight week man the trainers were going off you know what i mean spence um you know led by trainer of the year and then terrence crawford's trainer they just chirping going at it and and, and buzz trainers like yo ain't no more running you know you talking this and that you gonna eat your words so you know, it, there's there's hella, hella animosity there between the two trainers, and then you look at the the activity between the two, and this is something that really um, stood out to me. Bud Crawford, his last fight was seven months ago against David Avenation. However, Earl Spence's last fight was 15 and a half months ago. You know, there's been 18 months loaded out there, but I look, I'm looking at the the last six fights, he, he fought Ugas 15 and a half months ago. That's over, that's over a year, man. It's a long time. It's a long layoff. And I'm going to get to that in, in my analysis in a little bit. And I think that's going to play a role in this fight here, too. But let's go ahead and look at some of the things that do well, some of the things they need to brush up on, and, and where each guy can have success against the other uh, person and why. And there's a couple of fights that stood out to my mind, okay? So before I get to that, let's go ahead and look at the CompuBox stats, just the way that they go through their fights. What do they do? How do they move and maneuver? So Terrence Crawford, he, he throw about mm, 45.7 around on average. Let's just say a, a smooth 46. And Earl Smith, uh, Spence, he throw about 64 punches around on average. And Earl lands 22 punches around. Crawford lands about 17 punches around. So Crawford's landing at about a 36.5% clip. And Earl Spence right up there at a 34.3% clip. And that's above the at the copy box average. Um, in terms of total punches thrown, though, Earl Spence, he's above the average of 55.5 by about 10 punches. Or let's say nine punches. But Terrence Crawford, he's below the copy box average by about 10 punches so it's clear that Crawford is much more selective and we already know Spence is a pressure fighter and Spence is landing 22 compared to the 16.7 average but Crawford is right at that average at 16.7 he, he he's more selective with his punches but he he when he land he lands he connects they both land the same amount of jabs but Crawford throws about five less jabs so he connects more um accurately on the jabs that he throws again very selective power punch connection um oh, excuse me power punches landed around is 15.8 for spence and 10.3 for Stan terrence crawford but they landed about the same connect rate uh, about 48 percent for each guy on average so you're talking about a pressure fighter just the eye test which is matching up with the copy box number stats a pressure fighter versus a very selective counter puncher, but a devastating counter puncher. All right, just to give you guys some perspective on what each fighter is bringing to the table and what their relative strategies are. Now, let's go ahead and look at the keys for victory for each guy and look at some of their opponents that they've had and, and what they, some of the things they like to do. Okay, so you look at um, Earl Spence. Um, some of the things that he likes to do, and one thing. Um, that really stuck out to me is that jab. His jab is one of the best in the game, one of the best in the business. And he showed it one in his fight against Kel Brook. And what he did in that fight, which he also did in the Ugas fight, is he'll throw that jab, he'll flick that jab out, sometimes he'll double it up, and then he'll step forward and throw that four to the body, that nice hook, or you can even call it a shovel hook, right to the, the solar plexus. Jab up top, and then zoom hook to the body, left hook to the body. And that's, that's really a staple of his offense. And he did that against Kel Brook throughout their fight. He did that to Udenis uh, Ugas in their fight. And one thing about the Ugas fight, 
I, I really like that he had a game plan and he stuck with it. Okay, so the Brook fight, that one up top and then that four to the body. He loves that combination. And then against Ugas, he did the same thing, but he set it up off of the one. And then what you would see him do is he would throw the one and then he would duck down and then throw the four to the body. And then after he got you thinking about that, then he would throw that one, duck down, instead of throwing the four to the body, he'd come back up with the two to the head. And that's how he changes levels and he can be very deceptive with that. He's, he's very clever, very crafty. I, I, I've always been impressed about that with him, when it comes to him. And then his fight against Sean Porter, again, again, again. Sean Porter throwing that three, that lead, that lead hook. And what Earl would do is you throw that lead hook, he'll slip it, and then he'll throw that boop, four to the body. Okay? He's still doing a one four, but he would use that as a counter from time to time. That's that's one thing tactically that he did different different against Sean Porter, who's also an aggressive pressure fighter. So it shows that he has adaptability. He has different tools in the shed. And people would like to say that he's a straight up and down, no special effects type of fighter. To a certain extent, he is like he you know what you're getting with earl spence however he's very crafty as a reference by his amateur career you know he had a very very su successful amateur career i think uh, something like 100 100 plus fights and only 12 losses um you know Olymp olympic medalist like you know very very accomplished young man he won the gold gloves as well so he's he's very very experienced and he's seen a lot of different styles all right now some of the things that he needs to clean up, and I've always been a little critical of his defense. He has solid defense. He's not a bad defensive fighter. However, he has a lot of lapses from time to time. And we saw that, again, in the Kell Brook fight. We saw Kell Brook counter that 1-4 to the body. And one thing that I like that Kell Brook does, that um, Crawford does as well, is shoot in that counter too. That, that counter... Um, that counter cross. So... When Spence threw that one, before he could step in to throw that four to the body, Brook met him with that counter cross right to the jaw. And that's one that Spence is really going to have to clean up or it could be a very short night for him. And then Ugas. Ugas also had some, some um, success throwing uh, body shot counters to Spence when he was lunging in to throw the four. So he's going to have to be mindful of that. OK, um, and, and one thing that he's really going to have to stay away from is not catching uppercuts when he comes in to throw that four. He throws that jab, sometimes doubles the jab and then comes in to throw the four or even the two up top. He has to really be defensively sounder than he has been in that Brook and Ugas fight, because when that uppercut comes, comes, it is not the counter two, like Brook threw and somebody like Crawford switches up and throws that uppercut which Crawford likes throwing a lot again could be a very short night because it's not necessarily that it's super super impactful in terms well super super hard in, in, in terms of his power it's that he throws it in at angles where you don't see it you might be in the middle of your own punch hence you know stepping in and throwing a four and then before you connect with your four, that uppercut lifts your chin up and then your head's sitting out in the, in the 15th row with the fans and the fight's over. So he, he has to clean that up, okay? Now let's switch over and look at Bud Crawford. And he, there is no, I guess, bread and butter to what he does. He just, he's so versatile and there's no rhyme or reason to necessarily what he's doing at times. He's very crafty. He's a quick thinker on the fly. He obviously has a very good jab, but what, the fights that stuck out to me um, were the uh, Kabalaskis fight against that jab, which Spence loves throwing. He, again, one of the best jabs in the, in the business. And Kabalaskis, he had a pretty solid jab, but what Crawford started doing was throwing from the orthodox stance, I believe, the check hook against that jab. Okay, um, no, I, I think it would be a softball stance. He's throwing that, that check hook against the jab and a very sneaky and effective um, counter punch. It is one that you see all the time from fighters, but he's, if, if you see you leaving that jab hanging out or throwing it too much, 
to the point where he can get the time and your distance, which he's great at, he's going to come over with that check uh, lead hook and, and, and really rock your world. And then against Kavalaskis in that fight, um, I, I think early on in the fight, before he made the adjustments, this is something that Terrence was going to have to work uh, watch out for. And he has defensive lapses as well. The one-two. Again, Spence. Like I said, the jab, even though he can get countered by it, he's one of the best in the business. And he will throw that one-two down the pipe from time to time. And Terrence Crawford, he got caught with the one, and then the two came behind it very sneakily, and it rocked his world. Um, I actually think he got knocked down from that combination, which you're seeing right now, but it didn't get called. He held on, and then he fell to a knee, but he got rocked, and that's the punch he's going to have to be mindful of. The second fight that stands out to me would be against Avanation, and just like, just like Spence did, Bud really got to throwing that jab and then throwing a shot to the body after that. That one up top to the head and then the four to the body. And also the one to the head and then he'll come with those uppercuts, which I mentioned that Spence has to watch out for when he's trying to shoot his own four, which is his bread and butter. And then where Terrence is really crafty is he'll throw the jab, hold it up, like sticking to the guard just to block your field of vision and then while holding his jab up in your face he'll go the uppercut to the body hook to the body forward to the body whatever the case may be and you know you see Lomachenko do that a lot as well put the hand, put one hand up to occupy the guard and then throw a shot to the body or around the guard and, and he'll get your ass you know what I mean um and and he's gonna have to watch out for that but also in that fight Avanasian I really loved how crafty he was and it's something that I would be looking at if I was Spence and using this in my arsenal early on in the fight he steps to Terrence Crawford and he he's orthodox but he he put his right foot forward as if he was southpaw ish for a split second he put his right hand up as if he was putting into the high guard and then immediately through a hook with his right hand and it completely fooled Terrence Crawford and it didn't like destroy him but it it rocked him pretty good it rocked him pretty good so that's a, a, a shot that's there for Spence if he so chooses especially with that jab you know you throw that jab bring it back to the high guard and faint and then come right back with that hook boom you know what I mean so Terrence Crawford I look Spence, you know his team's seen that on video, and Terrence Crawford, his team has to know that that could be possibly be coming because I would be looking at that and trying to set that up as a trap myself, so you know he's got to be preparing for that. All right, and then last last but not least, the, um, the Sean Porter fight, which was, you know, Sean Porter, very, very good jab. Sean Porter has a very good jab, and he's hella athletic, closes distance very well, especially being a shorter fighter. He closes distance... Um, the only person I've really seen better than him at welterweight to closing distance pipe is probably Pacquiao. He jumps into striking range and then jumps back out of danger with the best of them. And he has a hell of a chin. So the fact that Bud was able to set traps for him and eventually knock him down and hurt him late in that fight, you know, Spence is going to have to be very mindful not to ever have any lapses at any time, any time, because because Porter had a lapse against um, Earl Spence, but Earl Spence was not able to stop Sean Porter. Porter had a lapse against Broner in the 12th round, got dropped as well, wasn't able, he was able to finish the fight and win it. He had a lapse against Terrence Crawford in the 10th or 11th round or whatnot, and Terrence Crawford jumped in for the kill and finished the fight so and people can people can say what they want you know Spence can say what he want oh he ain't trained right his dad say he ain't trained right man that's bullshit he he looked ready Sean Porter is always ready he, there's never a time where he's not ready and there were certain things that he was able to do with Spence that he was not able to do to Bud Crawford so look you know he's he's a very versatile fighter and he's He's going to be tricky, man. He's a magician there. He's going to be very tricky. So Spence is really going to have to have a plan A, B, C, D, all the way through M. 
if possible. You know what I mean? And really, he's the type of guy to stick to his game plan until it works. He's going to have to show some depth of knowledge and, and use some real discernment uh, when it comes to when it's time to um, move on to a different game plan or make subtle or major adjustments to his current game plan. He's really going to have to listen to his corner and be in the game 24-7, all right? So, so th- those are some of the things that stick out to me in terms of the combinations that they like and some of their, their weaknesses in their defense and, and combinations that they're susceptible to. So let's go ahead and, and look at um, the stat breakdown, speed, power, footwork, defense, stamina, so on and so forth, and then I'll give you my winner for this fight. All right, so um, keys to victory for Spence. He's going to have to cut off the ring and be defensively responsible. Keep them earmuffs up. Do not have no lapses like I just mentioned. And then third, apply pressure early and often. Early and often. Stay on his ass. All right. And then for Bud Crawford, one, the movement. Use your legs and your athleticism. Two, counterpunch very well, which he does. And then three, pace yourself like, like you do, as I, I alluded to with the CompuBox stat numbers. So let's go ahead and, and look at the first category, and that would be speed. And that category I'm going to give to uh, Terrence Crawford. Uh, Terrence Crawford, even though he's 35, we've seen it in his last fight against Avanation, especially uh, Sean Porter. He's still got the bounce in his legs, the bounce in his step, and he, he has very, very great lateral movement. There are some fights where he sits flat-footed, where he's just like being macho for whatever reason. And then there's fights like the Sean Porter fight um, where he's, he's moving. You know what I mean? And he, he's staying hella active, right? He, he He's deceptively quick, de- depending on what guy he's fighting and whether he feel like he needs to. Earl Spence, he has solid speed, um, but uh, he he's, he's a straight forward type of fighter. He uses the length in his legs to really cover ground quickly, but he doesn't necessarily move fast, if that makes sense. Like his foot speed, um, and his punching speed aren't necessarily fast, but he hits you with that thudding power. He He's deceptive with the speed that he does have. Um, but nonetheless, I get the speed advantage to Bud Crawford. Power, that goes to Earl Spence. However, I don't think Terrence Crawford is that far behind. Earl Spence, he has thudding power. The type of power that round one, mm, he, he punched good. Round three, all right, I, I can do this. Round five, uh, I'm... Man, my rib hurt a little bit. I'm starting to feel it. Round eight, I can't get away from this mother. You know what I mean? And then, boom, before you know it, you're down on the canvas. He has that type of power. But Crawford, he has like that flash, like KO power because he hits you from angles where you don't see it coming. So it's not even necessarily, he's not throwing super hard, but he's not throwing super soft either. But the fact that he'll catch you in the middle of your own combination and create a head-on collision. Yo, shout out to uh, Antonio Tarver. He, he um, stated it eloquently and perfectly. He creates car collisions with his counterpunching because he won't just catch you flush. He'll catch you coming on the way in. And man, he'll light your ass up, man. It, it is something to behold. So, you know, power to Earl Spence, but it's it's um it's pretty close. Uh, footwork, uh, Terrence Crawford. Um, the, the guy is amazing with his footwork. He, he gets in and out of range, in and out of danger at will. But Earl Spence, he, he also has, he has good fundamentals, but he doesn't have anything that's above and beyond something that's going to like wow you. He just does the basics very well, all right? And that's, that's a common theme with him. People are like, oh, he's just straight up and down. But you know, sometimes that's all it takes to really be a dominant fighter. You do everything good while other people they do some things great but other categories are lacking no he does everything solid and above some things are are good and then some things are great but he doesn't he doesn't do anything bad all right so i'm still giving that category of footwork to terrence bud crawford then moving on to defense i mentioned before earl spence he has solid um good defense um but he, he has holes in that defense. And he's gotten better over the years. And I've been critical of him in that aspect. And he, ha- he has tightened that up. But he gets hit way too much. And that's the type of style of fighting as a pressure fighter that is going to catch up to you 
uh, eventually. All right, I don't know if it's this fight or if it's in the rematch if they have one or if it's two fights down the line. I don't know, but as we saw with um, uh, Jared Hurd, um, Jared Swift Hurd, um, he's a come forward fighter at 154, and he he would just beat the, the fuck out of people because he was just bigger and he opposed his will but eventually that caught up to him like taking too many shots over and over again especially with Earl Spence you know having a car crash and then having a detached retina which is the reason he didn't fight Manny Pacquiao man those things add up you know lifestyle and and happenstance unfortunately they put take a toll on your body all right so you're gonna have to be mindful of that with the defense and Terrence Bud Crawford he has he has great defense but like i said before he has lapses especially early on because he starts slow and he gets caught with punches that he should never get caught with like i said he got rocked against kabiasius stupid behind car in the background and he got hit pretty flush by abonation like i know he stopped abonation in the fifth or sixth round with a brutal knockout but he starts slow at times so he's gonna have to tighten that up but that being said once he gets hit and if he's fortunate enough to not get knocked out and he, he you know it wakes him up he, 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 he brings the defense out and you're just not going to be able to connect against him. you just not, all right? As referenced by the CompuBox stats where opponent connect percentage is about 20.9% and connect percentage against Earl Spence is 28.8. Um, Earl's is a little bit below the average, which is, is good, but Crawford's is in the basement. Like, you know, 20.9%, like you're just not touching this guy. And when you touch him, you got to put him out because if you don't, he's going to turn up the heat on you. So defense goes to Bud Crawford. Stamina, that's a push. They're both in the best shape of their lives. They're always in phenomenal shape. And, you know, they got like 12, 12 packs at every fight that they go to. But, you know, they're, they're in phenomenal shape. Um, that's a push. They'll, they'll be there for all 12 rounds if it goes there, if it's not a knockout early. Uh, ring IQ, I give that, I give a slight edge to Terrence Crawford for the simple fact that he adapts very well, as does Earl, throughout the fight. And Earl will see what you do best and try to take it away from you. But Terrence, he's able to switch hit. And once he finds something that's working, he sticks with it and he gets you out of there. So ring IQ, I'm going to give uh, an edge to Bud Crawford. Uh, experience, I give a slight edge to Earl Spence. I think he's had the more vicious and tough competition, especially in his last six fights. Um, but Bud Crawford... They both have that amateur pedigree, and Bud Crawford, he's been staying more active. So I give the, the edge to Earl Spence here for experience, but Bud Crawford is, he's not going to be sitting in there confused about what's coming at him. And then X Factor, Earl Spence, you know what he is. He walks forward like the Terminator from the future, and he just chops you down like a trick. It's, it's really that simple. Now, how he gets to that final destination, he'll, he'll, he'll vary it from, from a little bit here and there as he's going throughout the fight. But he's really going to snatch that body and take your soul and really just demoralize you. That's what he does, okay? You know, you see a Mack truck and it's coming at you. It's not going to swerve or Tokyo Drift. No, he's trying to run right through you, all right? Which can be demoralizing, honestly. But Bud Crawford, he has that switch. He has this mean streak that when you hit him, he just cranks it up a, a notch, two, ten notches, whatever. He he has he has a nasty streak, and then he has the skill set to match that. Not only does he does that bring out the dog him, in him, but then he starts. Um, he goes from regular Terrence Crawford into like the Matrix, simple to like Lomachenko. He he just starts really dissecting, you, taking out that parrot that scalpel. And scalp on one hand and, you know, a pair, pair of tweezers, pliers in the other hand. And he just starts slicing you in all types of ways and just dissecting you until you get to a point where you start making a mistake or two mistakes. You have a lapse and then boom, it's over. So I give the X Factor to Terrence Crawford. And overall score, I have five categories for Terrence Crawford and I have two categories for Earl Spence with the push uh, on the stamina uh, category. So I'm overall, I'm going with Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, let me know what you guys think about that and what your pick is, but I'm picking him for three reasons. And this is how his fights typically go, which I just went over. The reach, 
this is going to be one of the first times in a while that Ter that um earl spence is facing a guy with a reach advantage on him number two the counter punch ability he takes away what you do best i can see him taking away that jab and ratcheting up the counter punching very selective with his shots very measured in what he's doing and then three setting the traps and that's how he reels you in um i guess pun intended with with spence being the big fish um so that's why i'm picking terrence crawford i don't know if there will be a knockout but i i would not be surprised i'll put it like that i, I think that he might shock a lot of people by stopping spence um but that being said i'm picking crawford uh, let me know if you agree, if you disagree, and I hope this video was informative, and I hope you guys enjoy the fight tonight. I think it's really going to be spectacular. We just got through seeing one of the best fights, in my opinion, or, or at least best performances, in my opinion, that we've seen in a very, very long time with Naoya anyway. Uh, check out my prediction video on that, because I, I think I called it pretty well, over Stephen Fulton. Right now, I have anyway as the number one pound for pound fighter, and it's going to take a lot to change my mind, even with this fight coming up. But if 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 we see something game changing, it just might. All right, so let me know, know what you guys think. Um, enjoy the fights, be safe, and I guess we're going to talk about it after the fight's over. Love y'all, man. Peace.